well, then we're going to get started with the Keeper Draft. So what we're doing right now is I'm just pretty much looking over cards and whatnot while uh, I get things set up and send out the links for the stream. Uh, crap. Uh, so Raffles. Totally posted a stream key by accident. Alright, so just waiting on people to get in and get things going. So let me know if you guys come in. Uh, if you guys got any questions or anything, I'll do whatever I can to explain. Go see. So if you guys can hear me loud and clear, just uh, leave a me message so I can uh, respond back. But so right now we're just looking at these cards. Um, about four more minutes, we'll be able to get stuff started. Uh, let me think if there's any info here we could actually talk about and whatnot. So yeah, sorry I'm quiet, just sending links out. I'm a fool and didn't send it before. Uh, three more minutes, we we'll able to get this started. Uh, let's see. <sighs> so yeah, Hepa got Hep pretty much ruined people in the artifact preview tournament. Um, we're never to load up Tifa to show the decks, but. I from what I remember, he had double Ogre, double Zeus, double Sorla. Um, the double Sorla draft looked out absolutely ridiculous, but um, his play skills really, really out up there. Um, I was actually playing him in Keeper earlier, and uh, I started like way, way ahead. Um, and pretty much two chain frosts, and I was done for after that. Um, I wasn't stacking my own deaths properly. But uh, let's go see what's going on here. Okay, player profiles don't exist right now. The interesting thing about the top heroes is like these are just you know the most heroes played. The win percentage for some of the guys is ridiculous. Um, I don't recall how accurate this win percentage was. When we did it, we did it um without top eight, and the percentages were much higher. Like Axe had this ridiculous percentage of um, I think it was like sixty percent win rate. Um, but this one probably didn't didn't input every single one, maybe, and that's the only thing I can really think. Cause like, um, or it was a sixty percent win rate in all the like the undefeated stuff. But it, I think it was sixty percent win rate in general um, in all of the stuff for Axe. So I'm surprised he's not up here for this stuff. One more minute, and we'll be able to go live with Artifact. All right, looks like people are already jumping ahead. Um, and we're good. So let me unmute Artifact and get things set up and we'll go. So Artifact has some pretty solid music. And, whoop. Oh, 
Oh, crap, my artifact one's not working. Let me re-switch this. Sorry, guys. Should have double-checked it. There we go, boom. And just gotta fit the screen. All right, so uh, let's go in. And we'll start with a uh, Keeper Draft. It costs you two tickets and um, five packs, but you get to keep every card you draft. Uh, at one win and two wins, you don't get anything. Um, at three wins, you get uh, two tickets and a pack. At four, uh, you get two tickets and two packs. Um, so let's get the draft started. Go from there. Um, so if you guys have questions about anything, just feel free to, to throw it up in chat, and I'll try to uh, pretty much kick back some answers. Uh, tickets and real money, um, you can get five tickets for $5. Um, packs cost $2 each. And so um, picks here, Venomancer is not bad. I'm not a big fan of it, um, though. Like, I, I tend to play kind of like wide but um way too small for me um so like for me the options here are pretty much something like all right pick off um ogre conscript roseleaf rejuvenator um lower sides like defend the weak and selamanes um so i don't know I, I always go green black and i am not amazing at draft right now and my play skill i think hurts me more than anything else so on this side though um i try to stay away from red i tend to go green black and i splash blue um, things like Messenger Rookery is kind of like okay. Um, it does the job, but they're not. It's not amazing. Uh, Lightning Strike, which is six damage to tower, is not great just because we're playing on uh, forty health towers. Um, Foresight, you get the card advantage, but sometimes card advantage um, just isn't relevant enough. Um, Dimensional Portal, what it'll do is it'll spawn three melee creeps for you, and um, if there's any openings against opposing guys, they'll block it. And other than that, you're going to get tower. So, like, this, for me, is a very strong card. Um, gives you a lot of presence. And if you go board, wide on a board, when they try to stop you, it makes it harder to line up with your heroes. Um, the other card is the opposite, Thunderstorm. So, four damage to each of the enemies. Doesn't usually kill most heroes. But it clears all the creep away. It lets you get to tower fast. Um, Divine Intervention, give all your allies damage immunity, will pretty much make it so none of your units are taking damage, your heroes or creeps. Um, for the entire round. You can still lose them to um, just spells that just straight condemn or kill. Um, but outside of that, like, you're you're pretty much looking pretty. Um, regen 3 for your tower is not great. Um, broadsword and Rumest kind of just don't matter as much. Um, I'm going to stick with the cards that are very strong. Um, Arm the Rebellion is very good. You might think that, like, two attack and one armor for your creeps um, isn't kind of, like, a world beater, but when you have uh, about three creeps getting in, or just like you know, some stuff happened, the guys died, and you have like a few creeps, uh, it does a lot. Um, it also puts your creeps at a huge advantage. They one shot the opposing creeps, and then they only take one damage, so they're gonna have to get hit four times by creeps to die. Um, so, like, that's a big thing there. And then I'm gonna take Selimani's favor to uh, pretty much ramp us. I don't, I just don't really like any of the other cards, and I'm not a big fan of uh, Arcane Assault with the, the normal theory I'm going with. Fucking Meepo. Um, I'm considering taking Meepo just to troll people, but I don't know. I, normally, you just don't take Meepo. You pass and just kind of YOLO and see what you get. Um, I'm going to take a forward charge, which if we get more creeps, we get some damage with it, and a uh, stone hall plate, because getting a couple arbor goes a long way. All right, so we're going to get a hero um, on the last pick. Um, I'm going to take these two because I just won't play a plate mail or a defensive stance. All right, so we end up with a Viper. Um, Viper's not that bad. What he does is um, if he takes damage... I want to do this stupid ability. So anytime he takes battle damage, he gives the unit minus one attack. So opposing heroes start hitting him and just get smaller. Puts you in a good spot. Um, so Beastmaster is actually a pretty good hero. Um, but the plan is for me to not go red, and I'm just going to force it hard here. So... I'll do that. Um, let me see if there's any other questions. No best color combo right now. Um, like, red is very strong for aggressive starts. Um, green is very good for kind of board control. Um, blue is 
pretty much like the weakest heroes, but have like the best wipes and kill spells. Um, and then they they are actually also the only ones with like real spam for like creeps. So like dimensional portal you saw. Um, so for this one, I'm gonna take the iron fog and a blink dagger. Uh, Blink Dagger is really good for moving around. So once we take a lane, we can move stuff. Helden Dominator, if I had any sort of hero, I thought I'd get real stuff in with, then I could take that. Assassin's Apprentices are also very good. Um, so I'm going to take the Necrophos just for board control, and I'll explain in one second. Uh, I'm going to end up with Payday and Hipfire, because Hipfire, four damage will clear. Oh, I can't pick two, both of them I'm saying. Sorry. Um, so um, Heartstopper or what it does is you give it to a black hero, and then... Um, Action phase or upkeep, you're essentially doing two damage to uh, his enemy neighbors, which is the guy across from him and the, the guy to the left and the right. And we're going to take a payday for more gold. Um, hip fire is pretty good there. Um, I'm just not stressing it too much right now. We're going to take a Seder Duelist. And Rebel Decoy is actually pretty good. Um, I want to test Home Field Advantage more, though. So I'm going to end up with that. Um, Home field advantage is like kind of more of a niche card, but when you get into a lane where it's just like the one guy and the creep aren't spawning, you get to pretty much shut him down. Um, so test that theory so that if you can like creep control well, you can just avoid everything that's going on there. Um, this stuff's not amazing. So since I'm not going to play any of these three, I'll just take blade with a blacksmith. The plus two cleave can be useful. Um, bristleback would have been real solid here. Um, so Black Heroes with Siege 3 kind of just almost doesn't matter. It's like 3 damage to tower over and over. Like, we had access to uh, two-cost ones that do it. Whenever uh, I go 0-2 or uh, get 5 wins, I'll, I'll do a giveaway. Uh, so Steam Cannon is a ridiculously strong card. The four damage, you can play it in any lane, and then you can active one, deal four damage in any lane. So if you put it in lane one, um, then you can start blowing up stuff cross board uh, the beginning of each round, pretty much. It's very, very good. Um, we have we have a couple guys right now. I, I like Remess Blessing um, a little bit more than the creep, usually, because the creep, this creep won't kill on its own. Um, and the three health to even just your heroes could be very good. Uh, a lot of useful stuff. I'm going to just try to speed up the picks. Uh, if you guys got questions, feel free to ask. Uh, we're going to take a Bounty Hunter here. So we're now going to look for uh, bigger, expensive gold items. Um, bounty Hunter is big enough for us to be pretty happy. And we ended up with a Payday. Bounty Hunter's ability, um, Coin Flips, for uh, whether it gets plus four attack at the action phase. It it's, uh, only lasts for the round, though. And then his actual signature um, gives a hero plus ten bounty, which is if you kill that hero, you'll get plus ten gold. You already get five gold, so it puts you in a solid spot. Um, we'll take a... Divine Purpose, and a Reptile Convoy. I don't know that I'm going to end up with the blue hero, so I don't want to take Foresight. And since we're a gold deck, Reptile will come in handy here. Uh, Red Mist is actually really, really strong. Um, I do want to take it, but I'm pretty much ending uh, black-green right now. So we're going to take an Iron Fog, and Thunderhide Pack is, like, the best green card in draft. Uh, Intimidation uh, it doesn't look amazing, but it's actually super-duper useful. The uh, moving unit out of your way and into other lanes is real good. Uh, leftover twos. Pride Through Pain's fine. Dude, they just keep trying to give me Tide Hunters. Um, all right, so let's see what we end up with here. So we're going to take another Intimidation just because we want to be able to take towers with it. And how many four drops we have? We have a decent amount. Um, I'm going to take the Remess Blessing just because the health matters a whole lot. I could take the Magic and Mole to uh, deal with uh, opposing improvements, but I'm just not going to bother. So, like, see, we got the, the creep back already. Uh, we're going to take that and a Shield of Basilius. Um, the two armor for your guys very useful, and then giving one armor to your neighbors makes them uh, kind of more creep efficient. Uh, nothing here for colors we're running, so... We'll take a Lost in Time, and we have some small sizes. A Broadsword. I should have took the better late than never, if I was willing to consider it, but I'm not. Um, forward Charge and an Arcane Assault. I don't like Lion at all. His ability is not, of a, it's not something I like. 
So untested grunt, and we don't have. We already have some attack ones. Uh, we'll take the zombie in case we end up with something blue. So Abaddon is really good at just not dying. Um, so it looks like we are locked in to pretty much green blue here. Unearth secrets is kind of ridiculous. Um, so you just throw it in a lane that's losing, and every time you take tower damage, uh, it's once per round. You'll draw a card. All right, so we get Selfish Cleric. I'm not going to end up with blue. And splashing, what, just Dimensional Portals and Thunderstorm is not worth it. So uh, we'll take an Avernus here. Juke could be very useful, but I have a very low attack, so I just want to be able to buff myself a little bit in case. We'll grab a Slay here and a Ravenhook. First storm. storm Spirit. How many cards in a pack? There's 12 cards in a pack, guys. Why is my chat not working? Uh, sorry, I don't know why I'm trying to pick blue cards. We'll take another shield here. And uh, we'll take the rare, just because we get to keep everything we drafted. Uh, Jesus Christ. I, I might play Book of the Dead, just because of the, uh, the board presence. All right. So we're definitely starting with a tree ant and a bounty hunter. We have to think about after is um, what do we want to realistically do each round. So I'm going to go in and add uh, the green and black cards first and see kind of where I end up with uh, numbers. Uh, so I'm putting pretty much all of the good creeps, all of the good removal, All the gold gen. All right, so we ended up with 17 green and 11 black. Um, this pretty much means that when we add, we have what, 28 here. When we add the other nine cards, we're going to end up at uh, 37. So we're going to have three slots left. Um, because we're so high in green, then that means I'm pretty much going to go a third or second and third green hero. The question is, is do I want Farvin? Not really. I have one in tree ant. So, uh, let's go with the Viper. Go Abaddon in the slot and Necrophos. All right, so that sets us up for 37. And we have a couple slots here to work with. So we'll go with the Home Field Advantage, the Blessing, and uh, the Forward Charge to help us break through at the end of the game. We'll go with the items now. Um, so... We have some gold gen. Um, we're pretty much going to end up buying stuff out of the secret shop or holding stuff. Um, but we definitely want a blink dagger. Uh, I think we 100% want two shields. The Book of the Dead is... It looks a little useless at times. Um, but it can be very beneficial. Just because get, getting a couple creep uh, to block stuff or to hit towers is real strong. We're going to skip on the stone hall plate. Uh, we definitely need more attack though. And what's this... We, so if we did that, Necrophos would actually kill things. Uh, it would help here. Nah, our attack's too small. We'll just go with that. And let's see, we got four more items we can put in. We only have one health item, so we definitely want at least two of those. Um, we've got two attacks. So two of those, and we're at nine. So I have register here, and we'll just go play. Um, I've been playing since July, but I haven't actually sat down to play that entire time. So it looks like people are struggling to uh, get their games in even on stream. That's nuts. Um... I'd expect people to already have zeros. I have a phantom draft. No, I don't have a phantom draft created, but we'll give this like a minute. If not, I can create a phantom draft too. So Rob and Roll, unfortunately, uh, there is none uh, that it looks like. So uh, one of the options is call to arms. 
Um, there's six pre-constructed decks, and you can uh, play with those, and it keeps track of how many times you win in a row. Once you lose, it ends the streak. Um, in social, you have open play, challenge a friend, and tournament. It looks like they've currently removed the ability to uh, do the drafts like we were doing before. So uh, right now, there's no free drafts, but um, if you look in casual play, though, it says there's a rotation on December 14th. So uh, pretty good odds some stuff will move in and out. Maybe around that point, maybe people stop playing Keeper as much. So maybe it rotates, maybe Phantom stays. But there's there's pretty much uh, constructed. Oh, um, then Phantom and Keeper. Phantom just lets you pay a ticket and then draft. So this is Elska. This is actually a buddy of ours. So let's go see if I get monstered. Hey, Truthfinder, how are you doing? All right. So you definitely always want to look at the three boards um, if you have available cards to see if there's stuff that's worth playing. Because, like, so, like, this Aphotic Shield, I could cast it here, um, keep them alive, and do two extra damage to them. But the question is, is, like, how worth it is that? Um, and it's not very. So you look at the rest of it, and there's at least over here, if you do it, stays you. I don't know. None of those actually seem amazing. Um, but we have that coming in. We're going to set this here just to get some gold and keep them alive. So next round, we'll get the kill off of it in the fight. He shot my tree ant, so he can go to hell. I kind of burn stuff out all the time to get gold to try to buy stuff, but I have a payday or two, so I do want to do some things. Does any color generally beat another in draft? Um, red's really big. Uh, give me one second. I'll give you the breakdown on all the colors because the, the, the dilemma is what you get with it. Um, so, like, for me, green and black have the best starter heroes. So if we actually look at Elska's deck, um, there's two Debbies uh, and a Keef. I already forgot this guy's name. Timbersaw and uh, an Ogre. So now the thing is, is that Debbie's actually a, a basic hero. So you start with three of them in draft, no matter what. So even if you don't get any black heroes, you're fine. So the thing there is, is that if you draft black cards, you're like, all right, Debbie's pretty good. It ends up being a 9-5, like almost always. Uh, so we're going to go here. So I'm actually going to put Necrophos on the right. The reason is, is because when the creep dies, I'll be able to get a... Uh, I'll be able to get a, a health. Um, the second lane, we're losing up a little bit, but it'll be fine because Viper will just kill and we can stabilize it next round. So let's go see what we got here. So we could home field advantage into a lane to see kind of what happens here. I didn't see you there. You're about Man, to he just really wants my guy dead. Um, two piercing... Let me think. So we're going to have Abaddon come in. We're already going to be ahead here. Ogre Maga is not going to do much for the opponent. So it's we're actually going to cast the home build advantage here. Um, the rationale behind this is that in the subsequent round, I could have got usage in this round playing other ways, that if um, it's pretty good odds the 4 it gets blocked, I'm fine being a little behind here. Uh... I can't think of anything that he could cast here to actually kill my guy. And the creep that could come down are like two fours, oh, sorry, four twos and three twos. Um, and then there's a four four that is four to my tower. So like he'll be ahead here, but if I had put it here and creep got spawned, then there were decent odds where I just wasn't going to be able to do anything. Um, could Viper Strike to be able to kill him in two rounds? I'm not concerned about it, so I don't want to waste the card right now. It's on the art. No. Uh, no means no. no. So we're going to heart stop her aura here. What this does is, uh, because if the Magi spawns in this lane, Magi would actually take the two and be able to 
get killed. Um, so we're going to take the shield here and a sword. And that's kind of why you go with the cheaper stuff, so that when you get some gold, you can buy a couple items. So we got the two creep spawning there. There's two more creep. Uh, we'll jam this in front of Timbersaw to block him up. And if Ogre goes there, Ogre dies. So he's not going to go there. So yeah. So he pumped himself there. Uh, let's go double check if I need pumps anywhere. He's taking nine from that. So if I actually keep shield for there, um, he'll survive that. But I'm actually going to let him die, I think. Um, we don't have much we want to do here. So I'm grabbing the, I'm, I'm jamming the 2-6 to get the additional resource. So next round I could Rose Leaf to put additional pressure if I want to. Um, the 5 damage doesn't matter because when Abaddon comes in next round I could just heal. And uh, Abaddon's ability gives a full heal and then damage immunity for the round. And it, it's every two rounds, so it's just kind of ridiculous. Um, he has that permanent, we don't care about that. Do I need the 2 attack anywhere? I don't. Um... So we'll get the extra damage in. This will make it so that we would two-shot Timbersaw. So I'm curious what he'll do here. Okay. So that 100% means we're doing this. It'll keep our creep alive while it stuffs all the extra damage. Uh, we don't need any additional attack still. We'll be at six. What are we going to, what, bounty hunter there? So, yeah. If we bounty hunter lane one, though, we can pick off over here, so we're not going to do Viper Strike. And... Yeah, that's pretty much it. So we'll just hit the tower there. How many cards in the base set? I don't have a number for you. Not going to lie, I've never counted. Uh, he's going, right. we'll grab a Traveler's Cloak in case I need to pretty much throw the four health on anybody. I have a feeling Keith's going to come over here. Uh, I don't need help over here anymore. Uh, so let me think. We want Bounty Hunter here in case we want to pick off. And I'm going to put the Trant there because of helping out our buddy. So he has all three in lane one, um, which is essentially the lane I'm ahead in. So it's it's very interesting. If I had started with my black hero, though, um, in lane one, I would have actually been able to jam down the steam cannon. Um, I kind of just expected Keef in, in lane three, and he chose not to. So uh, he definitely abandoned that lane, and that could essentially become a problem. So Timbersura got shut down here. He kills the Abaddon, but that dying doesn't actually matter. I'm probably going to pick off from lane 3 to, to get a kill. Ogre's his only blue character. Damn it, he got the heal. up yummy man this Debbie's just been doing work um we're not taking any damage there this gold doesn't matter we're gonna pass here and see what he does If he fightings, whatever, to pump the Keef, then we give uh, four health. So he whirling death. 
that makes a lot of sense. Let me think. So pickoff doesn't do a whole ton there. So let's just pick off the, the Debbie. It doesn't do a lot for us. It just kind of helps us out to stabilize a little bit. I don't think the Ogre Mag guy is going to do anything crazy from that, that third lane. Um, and let's get down a Reptile Convoy. So it increased our clock a little bit. Reptile Convoy is, uh, tends to be pretty good, but I can't spend anything here because if I buy anything, uh, my payday is not going to be as good. All right. So we have a single disarm going. Pretty decent odds to get one of them. Ogre gets hit, but that one didn't actually matter. Oh god, the come flag just killed everything except Viper. So we're gonna be at 31. Man, spending everything. So, like, one of the issues sometimes with giving up a lane, like they did in lane 3, is that I can just put all the leftover heroes over here and be fine. Um, so, let me think. We're actually going to Rose Leaf this over here. We're going to Rose Leaf right here. So, the reason for the Rose Leaf right here is for the one armor. Um, takes one less damage right now, takes one less damage from each conflagration. So, uh, what Routed does is it halves the attack of, uh, both of my guys rounded, uh, well, the leftover attacks rounded up. Um, and then they, they, when they're in a lane, I have minus one mana. So let's see, we're going to have nine over there. So was anything steam cannibal for death? So this seems really weird to attack the creeps there. I wasn't going to get a kill on any of these three, but it'll actually disarm him. And that was the only reason I did it there. All right. Um, was it evidence going in lane one? seconds remaining. All right, I'm going to spend my goal on a shield. So the shield, this one gives um, two armor and then uh, three armors to the guys next to him. So the entire rationale for going Abbott on lane one is so that I just don't give it up for free. And if I throw down the uh, the shield there, it'll uh, pump the creep. 
So over gets shot down again. There's not a lot of stuff that just straight uh, kills heroes. Oh shit. Alright. So that one's gonna end up killing that guy. So what are we gonna go? Shield here. It doesn't have a huge effect, but because it stops uh, the additional damage if he casts anything like a hip fire, the creep aren't dying. I could intimidation. We think. Yeah, let's shut down their black over here. When the trees come, I'll be ready. And I could pump over here, but I don't think I care enough. We'll now throw down a Viper Strike. So we can uh, snipe out the ogre now. So what happens there is uh, both of those actually go simultaneously. Um, why can't I see chat though from here? Just gonna let that die. Uh, So we got this lane. We can snipe out the ogre. Your death was a foregone conclusion. Uh, can't kill that. Don't care about the rest of it. We'll throw Salamanes in here just to have two more. In case we just want to cast everything in our hand. Left, right win condition. Yeah. Yep. If you uh, take down two lanes, you end up winning like that. Um, he has initiative, but I can't think of any red spells that go and actually kill my uh, Abaddon when it has two armor. So he's perfectly fine sitting there. I have bright lane, he has mid lane. And we have a win condition right here. And this guy shut down. But that's why I did it at the beginning of the game. Like, as long as I maintained board one, like, this thing was just going to cause problems. If I had put it in board two because he was going wide, I would, it would have stopped doing anything. So we'll uh, we'll jam a selfish cleric and then arm the rebellion for the the win. Uh, I guess I could I could get two if I go Avernus with Rose Leaf, but by helping myself, I'm helping all. I need to be ready for the cheap. And yep, dead. Which imp do you prefer? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with Nox. I prefer Nox. I can't even tell you which one's which. I've never even looked at that stuff, guys. All right. So we've got one win, one down, four to go, guys. Oh shit. All right, so this might be a loss. Um, <laughs> so Luna uh, had a nerf. So originally she gave at the, beginning of the action phase she would deal one damage to one of the opposing units and then she would go and add uh 
one charge to each Eclipse in the deck. Each Eclipse in the deck. Uh, getting plus three there doesn't matter. Doing it there doesn't matter either. So we're just gonna we're gonna leave it like this. Um, now what they do is they add it to three random eclipses. So since you're starting with six, they don't just super ramp up like they used to. Um, but it's still pretty scary time. Once they get like just the fact that they get there, they can roughly get two around until they they lose is real tough. So we get the kill there. I'm not going to play the Untested Grunt because the extra aggression isn't really relevant here. What would happen is, is if I play the Untested Grunt um, and they decide to spawn Ursa, there's like 50-50 odds on one of those two dying and just it just being bad for me. So let's see where our guys go. So that's going to go in front of Luna. We're going to get this over here. So if he goes Ursa with Luna here, my guy would die. I can Aphotic Shield to stop that a little bit, though. So we'll have Necrophos in uh, lane 2 in case we can line up with uh, Luna. Like, to the next to it. Yeah. So we'll at least get the uh, the health from that. So yeah, they did do the, the Ursa in lane 1 as expected. We got pinged. Um, so now this is relevant. So we'll super ramp up this lane. We still don't care about lane 3. Bristleback switching his targets is a bit of a pain in the ass, but I could always throw the Untested over if I really, really wanted to. Um, I'm fine with Treant dying here. We're not fine with it, but it's the lesser of two evils. Hello. Akureyri? I don't, I don't even know how to say that. Um, let me think. Would I throw in Tested Grunt? In, yeah, I would throw a Tested Grunt into Brid Bristle. So... I'm fine not having Roseleaf down. I just want the gold. I think the two damage um, with the additional resource going to next round wouldn't be relevant enough for me, whereas the gold is. And I don't want to cast this in lane three because Bristleback is red and has access to uh, Smash their defenses, which can go and kill it. So, uh, we're in a good spot lane two. There's small odds that he just abandons the lane. Um, this dude keeps pumping into that. I don't want to lose another hero this lane. Um, this round, I'm fine with it dying next round, though. So, we're going to throw an intestine grunt right in front of Bristleback and move on with life. Not afraid. That's fine. Because I'm not blocked by Bristle here, um, he doesn't get the armor. And I'm okay with that. If I gave Bristle armor, life was just going to be really hard for the rest of the game. Alright, uh, I have two paydays in deck. So we'll buy the short sword. And yeah, cool, we got the shield. So I can have Abaddon go in front of Bristle now and actually kill it. And... Uh... Yeah, I'm going to have Abaddon go in front of Bristle, and I think I'm going to give up that first lane. Or at least consider it. I could have 50 50 for the uh, the Ursa, but nothing would have blocked Bristle from going to Tower. So I chose against it. So we got an Arm the Rebellion, which is going to make things run pretty smooth in lane 2. What do we have fighting over here? I think I might be actually fine. Alright. Um, so what is, what is he trying to do here? If he has an item to what? What would he do? Let's just 
we're gonna pass. If he gives me, if he passes back, that's fine. Okay. All right. So the cheating death is live. All right. So now, how do we want to cope with this? So if I arm the rebellion, it actually doesn't do a whole lot. But I can shield to make this guy live. This will do well. I come prepared. My work will continue. This is my What do we want here? Armed Rebellion would only kill this thing. If I... I wasn't going to throw that in front of Bristle, so I just didn't bother thinking about it. Probably should have went Selfish Cleric so I can remess from lane 3. Because of the cheating death, it, it wasn't going to be valuable enough. That was a fucking stupid guy to lift. So we're going to super pump this lane. Bristle's pretty much not going to do anything. So one thing you don't want to do when you're playing against uh, like a double red deck with Ursa is lining up with red heroes is just pretty bad for you. Um, more often than not. So we're going to buy a Reptel for 4 health and a Town Portal Scroll if we need to lift a hero. Town Portal Scroll probably not going to get used uh, throughout the entirety of the game. So let's go see how I want to do this. I pretty much want to ignore lane one. But I need to win a second lane unless I just crush this one. If he has an Annihilation, then I'm pretty boned. We're going to just jam in. We're going to go for, uh, for Ancient. So the hope here is to just crush that lane so bad that uh, he gets ruined for it. Don't think you're safe. Divine Purpose would be really funny to just throw on a creep in that's in front of Ursa. So he has initiative, but the, any eclipses he have probably are not super crazy huge. We can get her out of lane if we really, really want to. Okay. So yeah, that didn't do a lot for him. Let's see. We could... So the Armed Rebellion here isn't super relevant. Keeping my guy alive uh, is... So we're going to Heartstopper Aura and uh, throw on our Photic Shield here. I lied. We're going to throw the Photic Shield here. Damn it. That stops what my plan was. Um, I can stand here all day. That completely screwed what I was doing. I I brain farted there hard. Because I was thinking about the, uh, the heart stopper and that, and I cast a four drop. I just messed up pretty bad. So we want this guy dead, though. I'm a 
We'll take less damage in the process. I'm surprised he has a cheating death with one green guy in the deck. I could have intimidated it away. Uh, whatevs. The divine purpose. Eh. Unless he puts a creep in front. I don't care, still. So if we get a creep to spawn there, though, it'll actually kill Bristle now. Um... We need to find more cards. Alright. That sets us up for good stuff there. I think I'm going to intimidate Luna away. But there's, there's some concern if I do that. Annihilation condemns the entire board. This is a keeper draft. Sorry, guys. Yeah, we're just going to maintain here. That strafing run is not great there. It would have been better in this lane. Actually, no. Probably doesn't do a lot over here. Alright. I just want no part of Luna. Go lane one. Go lane one. Yeah! Uh, giveaways when I go uh, O2 or five wins. We will so the rejuvenator here is going to trade. Um, we don't care about being ahead in the other lane. So let's draw the card. So we get a steam cannon. We want that guy dead, so we're willing to take the trade. But we need this guy gone. Guess I can try to kill him next round again. No, we just need him gone. He's got to be gone for good. Get, rid of, get out of here. If I don't kill him from the cheating that this time, then he'll get another trigger uh, at the beginning of the next round. Okay. So he jumped in front of Abbott in there, which is pretty bad. So it finally died. But the reason it's bad is because I can... Even doing this ability is just not very good here. So we'll do that. We can steam Canada away next round if we want to. For the glory of Stone Hall. Mm. Nope. I will protect you. This dude's just gonna iron lock up this lane. Never allowed. So the bristle's dead. We're finally going to get this lane over here, and we're going to give up that first lane. So we'll buy this first. Uh, blink dagger, blink dagger. 
15 seconds remaining. We're not going to take the blink. I'm going to take the siege. Um, I don't plan to leave this lane. So the siege is uh, a bit better because if I get blocked, I can at least get five to tower. So we don't want to kill anything in this lane, but the Luna's actually going to die. Okay, and he's lifting the other one. So he's going to have three heroes coming in next round. So the question is, what do we want to do here? What? Arm the Rebellion that doesn't set us up in for the kill. We need seven. I'd get two, four. Five, six with the short sword. So it looks like I have to play the steam cannon here. I guess I could play short sword and red mist, but... I'm going to enjoy killing you. I actually think we're okay just not taking that. We want to kill uh, the guy in front of Abaddon. Once he passes. Because that'll actually give us damage to that tower as well. So, in case we have to fall back, like backup plan, some sort. So I could get, what, two more damage here? I could get, I could get the full seven. But is there a reason to? So I could get it with Red Mist Maul, but then he's just going to fight that other lane, and I don't have... This lane's not super duper crushing. Like I had hoped. I had played... I had expected to get Arm the Rebellion down at some point way earlier. Uh, yeah. We're going to do it like this. So the reason I leave it like this is so that he tries to fight back in this lane. It's not for any reason besides that. And we're going to Divine Purpose this guy. So it never dies. Pretty much, it'll never die to um, to damage. It would have to die to an actual spell that would kill it. Um, and I can't think of anything in his colors that would do that. Uh, we don't play the Red Mist Maul, though. Because A, nothing's blocking us. Um, but B, it's, it's going to be that card that hopefully takes a tower when we're ready. But uh, this Blink Dagger will be very beneficial. Uh, I only have one health item out there. One on the heroes. So we'll buy a cloak. Alright. Um, so we'll go lane three here. If I don't do it before the end of the stream, I'll give it away at the end of the stream. This way you guys don't feel like you got jaded at all. Keybinds? Yeah, I can show you the keybinds. Um, give me one second. I'll click it after I pass. So the keybinds are here. Uh, for camera movement, alternate left, right, tab, zoom in, in and out. All right. Um, so we are going to. We're going to get that first because we're going to need it just in case. If he tries to play an eclipse here, both of those guys are surviving.
I just passed there, didn't I? Shit. Uh, I'm sorry. So I just screwed that up royally because I wasn't paying attention. I went to go look at the keybinds. Um, no one's fault. Tis be my own. All right, so we're killing her now with this. He has no items in hand. This is going to need to die. Get out of here. So that's why Slay's ridiculous, because he casts an 8-drop, and I paid a 3-drop to kill it. It's like, get out of here. Um, so that's dead. We want to be big enough to kill this guy. Uh, we actually might want to come from this lane over there, though. Hold on. We'll go Salamanius here to pump. So we're back to four. I can Blink Dagger and Heartstopper here. So we can Steam Cannon Darkseer away. This one only has 8 health, so I could actually just kill the Luna when it comes in. So we're actually we're in gonna we're gonna end up killing Luna uh, when it comes in. We're gonna pick it off and then uh, shoot it with the steam cannon. And then what do we want? The plus attacks irrelevant. So uh, let's grab a shield so we can keep our guy alive. The shield would keep us alive just barely for that. Um, we don't need you anywhere. We'll give you lane one. Let's get three guys down and some armor. So if I was paying attention better, though, I would have already shot a, shot somebody. It's late. Woo! So, like, giving up a lane is a very strong strategy. You just have to be careful of the way you do it. Um, against three color, giving up a lane can be really very, very good because what ends up happening is um, their colors are so messed up. There will be no eclipses on this day. So pretty much we want to jam everything next round, or in the other lane. We don't care about this one. Because I could play a Rose Leaf, then pump them, but it's going to give me like a three-round clock, and I want to win this round right now. But like I said, that's part of the issue. So like he could give probably plus four attack to this thing, but it's not gonna be it's not gonna be relevant enough. Um, the shield here will stop a chunk, a huge chunk of the damage because he has retaliate. I'm gonna be big enough to get that kill. And then I don't know how relevant this rebellion is. We're gonna do it just because we want the extra two attack. So it puts him to six, so siege would would do it. And we'll put the four health here, because we don't care about either of these. Uh, 
So he's down to six. We've got a siege five, a bunch of creep. Uh, we'll take the three. We'll take the shield. The, I don't think the broadsword is actually going to matter. Could it? I guess treant could matter, but the, I think the heal is more relevant. Fifteen seconds remaining. I don't grab the other uh, three gold item because I really just don't, not going to cast it. So we're going to shoot the Darkseer dead now for, with the, the cannon. We can't touch uh, Luna with it. So just get rid of the ability to cast green cards and the ability to flip a guy away. I just put an Unearth Secrets there, in case they spawn creep, maybe draw cards. Realistically, I already had initiative. Oh, sorry, I didn't have initiative, so it didn't matter. The cheating death with one green guy is real weird, though. Um, and let's Town Portal... I can't think of any black in my deck. They got rid of deck trackers, so it's a pain in the butt. So that's nine. Full heal, full heal. <laughs> never dead, never. Yeah, he pretty much scraps it up here. He'd have to have two creep to go in front of this. The only thing he could have is mercenary exiles and bronze legionnaires and stuff. Nice absorb Groot. <laughs> Groot did his job. Uh, just clone him back so we can see. Yeah, so we're at two wins so far. <laughs> now the deck's solid. Like, it's really hard to complain. Why is my chat not working though? So now we just gotta hope for someone to be in a good spot. My restream is just being a pain in the ass. Mm -mm. But guys, if, if you guys are typing in the other chats, for some reason I can't hear, or I can't see it right now on Restream. Okay, so that's the go to channel thing. So we're just waiting for the, the search. So, like, part of the issue in the uh, the closed beta is that, like, there's so few of us. Um, and it does, it's not like there's ten of us or something. But there's definitely there's probably, what, a few hundred? Um, there's so few of us that sometimes queuing up is a struggle.
What the hell? Why is it saying I stream FM? Oh, life. Yes and no. So, um, I reckon if I can cast there. So, like, part of the thing about the model, um, is kind of going to be entirely based on what they give back. If they go and have, you know, cash tournaments all of the time that you could just join in for cheap, um, I think that's perfectly fine. This model really is much closer to the model you would see in a in real life card game than anything you would see online. Like, yes, it's very different from that. But at the same time, I feel like you get more for what you're spending than the other online card games. And the other on car online card games, if you just go and you grind stuff, like that's perfectly fine. Bye Viper. But we're gonna shrink this guy in the process. Um, but like, what is it? Hearthstone, how much are you paying for a pack? I think like I feel like it was somewhere between two and two fifty, but it was so it was it was hundred gold, and doing arena was one hundred and fifty gold. In theory, you can free roll arena on this to grind packs, um, but it's kind of hard, like really hard. Uh, we don't care about slaying this to get eleven, so we're just gonna iron fog and move on. Uh, there's nothing you can cast here for three to kill that, so slay's just too good of a card. Um. Necrophos would die over there, would die there. Jesus Christ. Um, I'm going to buy a town portal for later, but the main reason is, is to... Because if... Empty is actually very good. So if Empty is paying attention to my gold spread, then he may be thinking, okay, he... Uh, this is tough. He may be thinking, all right, he probably has a Traveler's Cloak or a Short Sword, um, either of which would be very beneficial here. Uh, I have neither. But um, Empty definitely looks at the gold counts, and I go lane 2 instead of lane 3 um, because the 50-50 for lining up with Debbie would at least uh, result in a trade. I also now have the Aphotic Shield, which I can't use. But, what do I, do I want to sell a Manius over there? Not really. Let's sell a Manius here. Lane 1's always sexy, right? So part of the issue with uh, this match I'm going to have is, is that he has a whole bunch of uh, gain additional board shit. And I, I'm going to have to rip like the Necrophos auras to even try to like fight that. Alright, so cloak on the Venno. We have to offer up the trade because we don't get a choice in the matter. Mm. He's trying to make me slay to trade. Otherwise my guy dies. Slay to trade sounds terrible. But he doesn't have any huge guys because he's blue black. So we'll take the trade and move on with life. We we gained a health in the process at least. It would have been savage if I survived because of that, but unfortunately I'm, I won't. Such power. Such power. Singles is probably the better way to do it. If you there's only a specific deck that you want, yes. Um, all right. I have two green guys coming next round. I'm okay to not spend my gold. Yeah, we're fine like this. I'm not gonna pay day for seven. Um, I have this iron fog to get me to ten, and then this will put me to eleven. So at bare minimum, next round I'm looking at um, eleven gold for that. As opposed to seven here, which definitely didn't feel worth it. Um, yeah. All right, Abaddon's one hundred percent going there. 
this is where I have to decide what's going on. Do I want to fight this lane hard enough? I don't. I need to fight this lane. I can't just let Benamancers take over. Yeah, and he jammed them together. Fast it. Alright, so we got them next to each other. Um, we have a Thunderhide for next round. What do we want to do? We kind of want this guy dead, so that means no Reptile Convoy here. Um, if I went to the left of Zeus, it would have been bad. Like, potentially I could have got the kill. Um, it was 25%, though. I think I'd just rather have the armor in case anything bad happens. If I really want to kill Zeus, I get a Photic Shield here. Um, and I don't think this is relevant as killing Venomancer. I must tend. Yeah, we 100% need this Venomancer dead. Um, The only thing I don't know is if the attack gets decreased if no actual damage gets through. We have 45 rares worth, 50 cents, and 5 rares worth 50. That's fair enough. So, like, the only dilemma is, is that uh, we will not have... Like, right now, we don't have the ability to buy and sell. So then, what do we actually do? Because this is very fortunate, by the way. Okay. Hey, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Average chance it'll appear in a pack. I'm waiting for him to pass so I could just throw my shield on. Wish I could F2, man. The F2 being disabled is brutal. What creep did he just kill? Oh, that one. Okay. So he wanted the six damage to tower. Heart Supper Aura is just not worth it here. So we will take our uh, 16 gold and move on with life. And he lifted his character. Alright. Um, so let's go start buying random shit. That'd actually be really beneficial here. Um, shield? Not necessarily so much. We'll buy it anyways. 15 seconds remaining. I'm greedy. So, like, I could have saved to try to have the secret shop planting really strong. Um, the choice, I chose not to. So, Zeus is still not going to die. Actually, I lied. We have a Thunderhide. We're going over here. Oh, no. We had a huge-ass reptile. I'm sorry. I forgot. No. <laughs> that thing would have took tower by himself. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't paying attention. Screw it. You got an Annihilation, you got an Annihilation. We can just not buy shit for the rest of the game and move on with life. Sure. Um, I'm going to throw the Poaching Knife, just because I want the extra gold. So the poaching knife there had cost eight, but then it got me six. 
There was a potential for way more here, but the odds were just not amazing. Jerk. Um, shield here would keep these two guys alive, but staying alive is not relevant. Short sword is relevant. So here's the dilemma with staying alive. If I keep him alive, he's going to die to the stupid ability. Um, those two die. I guess I didn't realize either. I could have just held off on the short sword. Being bigger there doesn't matter. I could hope to stop one of those two. Or I could give up the lane. He's got another Venomancer coming in. It's not going to be a great time. I decided to get take the two damage to the two of them uh, more than anything else. I could shield and flask to keep alive. Um, don't know how worth that it, it is. Screw it, let's do it. They won't be able to kill me. So the rationale here behind staying alive is that I think if I don't stay alive, I'm gonna have a lot of problems. I don't have a hero coming in next round. I have to cast the flask to stay alive. Buy high, sell low. Always Robin roll. Always. I should have heavily considered just putting shield here and being alive by uh, the additional one. Because it's only going to be at two anyways. The difference between two and one here I think isn't, is it doesn't matter. Yeah, I expected coup to go happen there, so that's fine. So we've got 16 gold, no one coming in. We're going to home it field advantage this third lane from lane one. Uh, we're going to take Hourglass because Hourglass is going to make it so his draws are to poop. And this heal th the heal six is actually might be relevant. Spent on my gold again. Oh my god. Uh, I have no attack. Oh, we still got tower, so we're good. For a second, I thought I screwed that up. I don't know why I home field there. All these guys suck. Uh, three health here. Eh, it's relevant. Screw it. Stay alive, people. It's the only he health item I have. So, seeing as he's not likely to draw from here, I'll just, I'll keep it for that lane. We're gonna hourglass viper. Hopefully after he spends something. Thank you. That was actually probably the worst thing I've ever seen them do. Thunder gods here? Thunder gods doesn't get a kill. 
What's he scheming? Well, actually, I lied. He'll have two more health at that. For the round. I was heavily mistaken. Um, because I forgot the, the cloak. Um, so that guy stays alive. We have... We have to heal here. If we don't heal, uh, Thunder God's Wrath in lane one, or even here in lane two, would, would get the kill. It only does one, so I don't care about it. I guess it pokes this 2-7. The damage is so slow because all the one threes. But if I spawn anything next to, like, if I spawn anything here uh, in the, the mid section, like, that guy's just dead. It'd be good right now, this Book of the Dead, if it wasn't locked. Alright, so we finally get to kill this stupid thing. All right, so lane three is done. We need to spawn both guys in lane two. So actually, let me let me reassess. Eleven. Yeah, it's not enough. I can't change. Um, I can't can't change the numbers here. Fifteen seconds remaining. I need to find a fresh card. Everyone spawns in the second lane. He's, he's playing uh, Zeus here because he plants the Thunder God from there. But the, the Hourglass at least um, prevents any draws from having an effect on us. Rose Leaf will be really good in mid lane. Am I okay with my guy dying? Do I need to cast? That guy's not dying. Oh no, that guy would die. Alright, let me uh. We have to pass. We can't. We can't play anything there. I have to throw that on so he doesn't die. Sorry, friend. We're taking both your blue guys. And we're getting seven health back. We are not dying this round. So the bounty hunter doesn't die. So, 15 seconds remaining. I can't remember. Five seconds remaining. Shut up. Three. So he gets Debbie in. We still have the hourglass in play. So his two draws will be locked for a round. 
Rest in peace giveaway. No way, man. I don't have to go XO. 5X just means I could lose the one before it gets expired, as long as I get five wins. He only has three cards and two gold cards to play, though. Throw a uh, the book of the dead doesn't even do anything either. Either all my creep dead. Yeah, they are. So I can I can play untested grunt in a satyr or two satyrs. Two satyrs is probably best here. But we have to block actual stuff going to tower. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you trying to do? Let's go block something that, with two attack. 15 seconds remaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's ready to play? You jerk. Um, what's relevant here? Like, can I get the tower? I don't think I can. Killed that other thing. Um, I guess most most health for towers. The relevant one here. Any of my creep die in the beginning of the next round? No. But he gets two guys in no matter what. Destroy their so I, that may have actually been bad. Because I might have to YOLO this first lane. It should have been just enough to stay alive. I think. Um, none of that matters. There's too many guys there. I'm really just not big enough to take this first lane, either. Alright. If I had saved those guys, though, then I think I there was a chance to actually steal lane. Because I could have played both of them and the Arm Rebellion, so that would have been 10. Plus the two guys. What was it, 15? 31. Yeah, no. No way. Oh, no. His hourglass got me. The steam cannon, baby. Nope. I'm dead. Empty's too good. He's too good. What are gold cards? They're the items. It's too many small guys. I can't deal with it. Too good empty. How expensive a pack? Yeah, two dollars for a pack.
so hoping to find somebody now. Um, but and you guys have any questions about any of the game mode? Oh, we got somebody again. Charmer. All right, so another Luna and two Venomancers. Jesus. So we got the pump here. We actually got unearthed secrets also, which is kind of ridiculous. So yeah, he had me switch over. Unfortunately, I have no way to switch back. I had a slay in theory, I could have, but. Let's go draw some cards. No smash, please. Alright, one second guys, it's fucking work. needed this for the job. All right, sorry about that, guys. Um, I own stores, and the stores haven't closed for another 30 minutes. The retail life. So, dead, dead, dead. He spawned over there. Those are all dead. The question we have to ask ourselves is, do we actually care about this lane or not? I'm fine doing this Hello. and kind of just seeing what happens. It, it might end up trading, but I could have in this this lane, depending on what spawns, and then uh, throw in a Photic Shield on it if I really, really wanted to live. 
I couldn't cast a, uh, a minion in lane two next round. Um, either way, uh, the odds of them playing a tower thing is really low. So we'll play a short sword, and we'll grab that as well. I could go lane three, or lane one, but um, lane three m makes the most sense in my mind. So we just need to hope for him to not take both pings here from the one ones. We could arm the rebellion there. So if he does the fighting thing, I won't arm the rebellion. But if he doesn't, then we're fine. Um, I don't want to give him five gold. But I'm already looking at a bunch of 50-50s. Would shield have any relevance? It would have relevance here. That hits there. We're going to give up lane one. We're gonna let them trade, and I'm just—I'm gonna summon the Viper there to try to fight things. But overall, I'm gonna give it up because. So part of my dilemma here was that this two two was gonna live no matter what. So the shield would technically stay there, but the the dilemma is, is that when the Venomancer would respawn, um, the little shit guy. What'll end up happening is is it'll uh. It'll put it here, unless he spawns a creep with it. And then it's another 50-50 to die or not. And I realistically would like to move the Bounty Hunter. I guess, the, in theory, I forgot if I saved it, though. We would actually kill the zombie beginning this round. Less than five gold I got that round. Arm of the Rebellion, not super useful. Currently, I could what, keep him alive. So we're going to pass. Death is coming for us all. I'm heavily considering whether to keep the 2-2 or not. Not going to lie. If I let it stay alive, yeah, no, I don't want it to die, though. I'll take the, I'll take the gold and move on. Do I want to take four damage, keep that guy alive? Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're going to throw the shield on here. It'll keep this guy alive without giving up a uh, Arm the Rebellion or a Photic Shield, and we can go Thunderhide next round and not be in front of freaking Keef. Plus, it keeps us at four. Which is just healthy enough. Mm, exquisite. So we've now blocked out the entire damage and get the kill. I need to maintain uh, a higher level of gold though. Um, because I want to get actual, I want to get like the ridiculous items in the secret shop. So if one pops up, I need to, to hold it every round until I can afford it. And like, I'm really bad at holding items. Release date is the, uh, 28th. Thank you for people answering stream. Um, so this card will, Hourglass is ridiculous. And Town Portal is always very good. So I'm going to, I'm not going to get Book of the Dead though. So what did we want? We wanted to mess around with lane one. Two guys are going to spawn. I lied. 
I already said we're giving up lane one. So he's putting Ursa lane one because that's the one he wants to take over. He doesn't have either of the colors for, for pumps, which are both black and green. So by pushing lane two, when I play the Thunderhide pack, it's pretty much going to take it. And we've, we've done very good in lane three. Because we'll be able to uh, smash there for 16. Could play an Entusted Grunt and then arm the Rebellion also if I wanted to. Can you smell the my daughter's bring? Putting him here in case he turns left, takes out Keith. I don't want to put him next to this one. Yeah, we got him. So this unearthed secrets ended up being dead because I keep defending this lane. What's your score? Uh, scores two one. I don't go to or, or a five win by the end of the stream, I'm still giving it away. For the glory of Stonewall. Uh, the health here is not really large. It's probably where I need to be. Kill, kill. He has armor, he'll survive. So what we're going to do is we're going to play an untested grunt and then we're going to remess blessing here. I could actually throw down the uh, the arm of the rebellion and remess from lane 2. But the arm of rebellion there just seems real small. Would I get two damage? Would go to eighteen. I might arm the rebellion lane th uh, lane two, so I'm just maintaining. I want to make it so that the an eclipse wouldn't like crush me. All right, so we'll buy the blink dagger. We're gonna spend all the gold in a short sword and a heal. Um, the reason the blink dagger will let us move viper or something over if we just need more attack um, We're in an okay spot in lane two eclipse or our uh, Our guy is relatively large there um, We got huge guys over here though one guy in each So we're gonna arm rebellion this lane He put both over there, so not playing the Bounty Hunter there was a decently sized mistake. Let's go see what we ended up doing uh, in lane three. So we got a payday. You're late to the party. <laughs> there could be an Annihilation coming from mid. Really low odds, it feels like, though. He needs uh, an attack booster to go on Venno, and then uh, the plus four, plus four. I'm green black, so there's just there's no reason for him to not take tower here. No, he needs seven. Yeah, no, four and two wouldn't do it. He needs two of them. Yeah, he's too short. Math is bad. So an eclipse here for what? Four charges? Five.
can't think of anything that costs one. Uh, let's start off with the heal. You know, I'll start off with a short sword. A weapon Strafing run would kill this, and nothing else. On the rebellion will keep them all alive. Except for that guy. That guy's dead. So keep both of these guys alive. Stand with me and be We're gonna healing salve this guy though. I don't care if my heroes die. That guy's not allowed to die. No thanks are required. All right. So. We can watch his blink dagger over. Still get the 24, so no problem there. So yeah, keeping the Rebellion ended up being a proper play. Like, the Remesque would have actually just gave more health. So maybe that would have been better. Tends to be hard to gauge. Um, we're going to buy another Hourglass. Have a good one, Game Slayer. Thanks for watching. So a 33% chance for that Venno to go and kill one of the guys. All these tracks and paydays now. Such a handsome meal you make. Getting a bunch of these little bastards is real good. Um, they're not very good against like Lycans or Sven's. Um, any of the anything with big cleave or uh, super minions crushes it because like. The two fours um, in this end up like trading more often than not. But like Venomash is just so tiny. But once you throw some health on it, like whatever, you move on with life. I make this look easy. Got another eclipse. Cause I got another hourglass coming. Oh, we got tower. Sorry. I didn't mean to BM you. So I, I went to go PM Charmer because I totally didn't realize I had that, um, the crush there. I was just too busy trying to figure out how to win the lane. I'm dead. Sure, why not? So it's when I go 0-2 or get five wins in keeper. If I do neither, then by the end of the, the stream, I'll do it.
Oh, I always feel like Bounty Hunter never gives me the pump when I need it, but always gives the opponent the pump when he needs it. I don't care about heals, and I don't, like, no, none of those are just super good to me. Um, I have to look for big cards. Um, I don't want to go here. Farvin is very likely to go here. So let's, uh, let's block him up a little. He could go second lane if he really wanted to. But, like, with the, the creep and the ability to move... Like, my Viper would just shrink the crap out of Beastmaster either way, and I'd be okay with it. Yeah. So, if I ever went here, we'll see how the lineup ends up going. All right. Mask, and so we'll unearth in lane three. So we'll rose leaf here to the right of Triant. I'm actually likely to, to end up being really far behind in lane two. So I do have to ask myself, do I just want to put an unearth there, knowing that all three of these guys are dead, and that I'll likely draw a card next round, but then not have gotten the one for this round over here? Because, like, how, how hard am I going to push this lane? I don't think I will. Or I'm going to put Abbott in there, but I'm likely to put Bounty Hunter in lane three. Nope, now I can play on Earth here. Um, eight. Two armors, not relevant. So we'll get the draw now. You really don't want to like abandon lane too early. Because if you abandon too early, then a lot of time what ends up happening is, is um, you go up the lane for free, and then you push like four heroes in the other ones. Just what I, uh, I don't, yeah, I, I don't sack that early Robin roll. So like, there was a there was a while back where I used to sack almost like immediately in the game, but what would happen is, is in in the so like you end up fighting very often and gold will happen and if they get the town portal scroll and you gave up a lane and then they just they've killed it with creep like leftovers then you're gonna have uh huge problems so i have i might hold shop deed because this game's likely to go very long so we're gonna hold the shop deed um and i'm gonna grab the three health so what hold does is you pay a gold and it'll stay there each round So I have a Viper coming in. I really can't leave this lane like that. Viper, Abin is not going to be a huge differential here. It's three guys there. So I'm okay with throwing Abin. Because if, if it lines up with the the Legion Commander, I can I survive anyways. I can always throw the ability on. One of these, I don't know where he's going to end up putting these. Like, he could fight lane one if he wants. Or does he give it up, put one here, put black here, red here, depending on, like, what he has? Yeah, so he is fighting it out. And no one jumps on Abaddon. We do get a pick off. Pickoff's not huge. Uh, 
So I'm a little concerned about clear the deck. 15 seconds remaining. But I don't want a creep to be able to spawn and get an armor. I did this because I can remask right after. Keep him alive. He'll get two health from these two dying. But I could also just cloak him. Uh, I prefer to cloak that guy, though. Do I want the health over there? Oh, shit. I forgot he has access to duel. That's bananas. So this guy dies now, and this guy ends up taking two. I could pick off here to kill this guy. Oh, actually, no, I can't pick off anymore. I could pick off next round. I can't do shit next round. No. Oh, I could actually... <sighs> so, there's pretty good odds he has, what, big green guy? He only has one green guy. There has to be some huge green guy in his deck. Slay doesn't get me anything besides keeping this guy alive. I get Viper next round, but I already gave up that tower, and I'm not pushing any hard or anywhere. I think I have to burn the Slay here. I, I don't think I can afford to have him die this round. What's up, Mr. Del Ross? How you doing? So we're currently uh, two and one, or we're two and one, right, guys? Or is it three and one? I don't even know. See, I'll check you after. Is he worried? The two and one or three and one? Um, if I get five wins, give away a beta key. Um, I've already got the win here, so can't go O two. But if by the end of the, the stream I don't end up giving up away the beta key, I'll give it away anyways. 3-1. Thank you. That's how much I don't, I don't even bother paying attention. I never thought I'd fight alongside the Bronze Legion. All right. Um... I completely forgot about Duel, though. Um, we're going to run into an issue when we get to 7. Um, Beastmaster's ability is ridiculous. So it's going to... It stuns the unit blocking and then moves the allied neighbors to random other lanes. So, like, you can't really go and give up a lane when you're playing against Beastmasters because then the other lanes you're trying to fight, they can just go and throw them. And if they throw them back in the lane you gave up, like, you're done. And, like, there's definitely something I would... See, my Beastmaster, like, never triggers when I want it, but triggers every time there's a freaking creep. Alright. So, do I need to pick off here? I could pick off the dog. Or I could pick off this guy and shrink him down to a three. I don't think pick off there is super duper relevant. I'd rather just do it next round. What are we? We're going to be at six. Yeah. Oh, my God. I keep holding it because I think that's the only way I actually kind of get out of this. I'm going to try to block this lane up enough. It might be a huge mistake. So let's see what we get for the draw. This couldn't come at a better time. Hmm. Hmm. 
So yeah, we're losing that lane. I can Intimidation to keep it alive. We're going to pick off over there. These guys dying, I'm okay with. Nothing's really happening here. I keep playing Unearths and then blocking that lane. I definitely should have played it in lane two. I knew I was going to be way behind, but I, th I thought... I thought realistically I'd, I'd be okay in lane three, and I definitely wasn't. I didn't check well enough. How's it going, Livison? You end up getting 60 cards. So, like, Keeper Draft can be very good. So, we're going to have four open spots over here. Two heroes. I'm going to have to Intimidation. So, this is hitting for nine. I can take the six hit, I can't take the nine hit. And we'll have pseudo stabilized here. We can jam Rosalie. Jesus Christ, gay. Okay. So this is still fine. When we rolls leaf, we're still alive here. Still didn't get the kill. And, like, in theory, we're still okay giving up the second lane. We just can't let him, like, crush us. All right. So, if we come in at four, we're still okay. I have to buy one. I'm trying to get the tracks or paydays of some sort. That'll go there. All right, Treant, give us a good time. Oh, Treant, you funny guy. So, this creep's blocking the crap out of Farvin. If he gets plus four attack, plus four armor, I can still get the two attack to be able to kill it. Um, I do not want to put my 7-7 seven, seven here next to him, though. So we're going to go way deep. The reason I'm not doing it here is because if he decides to stun this guy and push this guy away, I don't want this guy pushed as well. Oh, man, if I notice... See, this is why you got to look at lane, because if I notice this, I, I might have just jammed the 7-7 seven, seven here. Like, we're not, we weren't in some immediate issue here. I could just pass, so if he ends up passing, I jam the 7-7. Seven, seven, get back to 8. Kill the creep. And then anything that spawns there would go and block um, Legion Commander. How's it going, everybody? Sky Dairay. And Alfred Tella did doggy? What? Uh, what did he just cast? Spring Trap? Can't do anything here anyways. Uh, what do we get? Two four eights, okay. Really wanna track a hero and get to kill it, but I need a black guy for that. He spent all his stuff, so we've kept the uh, Trant alive. So what are we gonna have? Uh, those four guys attacking us. 
but then we have three guys attacking him. So 15. Max is, what, 19 next round? Alright, so he lifted because he didn't want to give me any gold. Uh, I'm going to keep the short sword in case we need it for Bounty Hunter, but Bounty Hunter just pretty much always triggers on creep. It never triggers on hero, so we should be good, right? Unless the theory is that just when I need it, it doesn't work. That one looks like a close lane. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely a close lane. Um, boom, boom, boom. So we're going to pass here. Aphotic Shield only giving two tech to retaliate. Like, it's not that it feels bad. So that you always feel short one. Because, like, I could Aphotic Shield to what? Keep my guy healthy? I guess I'll just Aphotic Shield to keep him healthy. This will also shrink down to one attack after. And I'm going to Remess Blessing lane 3. It doesn't keep everything alive, um, but it keeps this. And, nope, Bounty Hunter actually dies. This Legion guy is freaking kicking my ass. Jamming down Remess here doesn't do a whole lot besides keep this guy alive. And what, make this guy super duper fat? Those guys are already big. Alright, let's do it. So, the entire reasoning here was just to keep the creep alive. Um, the main thing being there is that by keeping the creep alive, they block 4 damage for next round. Hey, I got the pump. I know how it works, guys. I've learned. He's only got 4 gold. Um, he'll be at 10... I'm going to throw the track on the Debbie just in case I don't spawn my Necrophos there. But I don't see much changing for me. So we get those two dead. If we track and then hold Secret Shop again, we can finally get the damn thing. Subsequent round, most likely. I don't know why he shot. Oh, he's a no accident. My bounty hunter's dead. But I'll draw a card. Okay. I, maybe he was afraid of me putting a health item. I don't know what you do in P-Main. Maybe he wants initiative? Gotta hold that card again. So you want to pay attention to your opponent's gold. Lane 2 is doomed. You want to pay attention to your opponent's golds because you'll see how many cards they got and how much gold they spent. So we could have another Photic Shield. Um in mid if we want to keep Viper alive but I think we're fine Viper finally dying this Reptile convoy has 5 attack so let's see what he does um, I'm hoping he spends it so I can play the Reptile convoy to kill this guy Oh, I can no longer play the Reptile Convoy. I offer you this. Double check for Short Sword necess Necessity. We don't have one. Short Sword banging out here. So uh, he spent nine gold on two items. So that could be, what, three and six? Four and five? Man, I wish I had my... The ability to cast stuff right now. I really want that convoy to kill that, but I'm probably spending my money next round now.
probably miscounted the armor. So every time you have a new instance of damage, it's going to do plus one. Um, but this was still one instance, and it pumped it. How's it going, Ajax TV? How you doing? Um, ask any questions you guys have. I'm trying to look over at the same time as I'm playing. Um, if I wanted to really tank this lane, I can intimidate Legion and then spawn Bounty next round, but that's not great. Um, I'm okay with dying. We need the Intimidation for lane one. What did he... Oh, I forgot what he played. Hold on. So he had nine gold. Played that. So he had a three cost. The three cost might be a bounce. I'm going to offer the trade here. Instead of keeping my character alive. Uh, this is a really odd way, reason. But I'm afraid that that's the... The lift spell. Fifteen seconds remaining. I'm okay with dying here. I it, like if I use my ability and he lifts, it's whatever. But if I pass here, maybe they take the trade. Um, I think I'm pretty screwed as far as like timing, no matter what. So uh, the shop deed in my hand needs to get cast. It's it's pretty solid odds they didn't have it, but there was a huge concern, and I really needed the shop deed. All right, we need to get fresh cards, and we need to start doing shit ASAP. All right, so let's get bounty in lane. Lane one. That's gonna die. Those will fight. We don't care about that. We got this crazy brawl in lane one though. All right, so currently not blocking anything, which is good for us. We can Reptile Convoy in front of him just to, to stuff 10 damage. Payday, you're fucking late. We can Steam Cannon for a kill. We're going to Shop Deed and Potion and waste time. The only spell he could realistically cast and... Um, Pretty much mess up everything is uh, the the it's a red card. It costs four, deals two damage to a blocking hero. But even like even if it just straight stuns this, I'll just play the steam cannon. But I'm gonna play, yeah. So we jam down steam cannon because I can steam cannon the Farvin to decrease the most amount of damage if he tries to save the uh, the Ursa. So if he saves one of them, I can kill the other one. So no matter what, he's getting a reduction in damage here. I'd prefer to him to not have a green guy, though. So we've stopped 10 damage and the green guy. Fortunately, we can't play the Sephotic Shield. So let's go draw cards. So that every item in that first slot is going to be free now. So I'm just going to have a free item every round. And I held it the entire freaking game. Uh, three ones the record. I don't think Pugna is viable at all. Unless we get in some format where just people are playing tons and tons of spells. <laughs> no worries, we see you next Tuesday. Um, bam, bam, bam. We don't have anything we can cast. All right. So we've got a steam cannon in this lane, at the very least. And we have an Abaddon coming down. This creep taking the tower on his own. Block this thing. Oh, actually, no. The tower's already taken. What am I saying? But the Viper's finally going to be free, which would be really nice.
It'll only be free in two rounds. Um, I can intimidate my own guy. But I'd rather have it in two rounds than intimidate it right now and then it'll die anyways. So I'm going to have to give up part of lane three just to stabilize lane one. I think I need the four attack on the Revtel convoy. Fifteen seconds remaining. I lied. I'm gonna grab the shield. Revtel convoy can just stuff somebody and move on with life. He'll, if he wants to push harder, he puts it in lane one. If he wants to try to restabilize, take lane three potentially, he puts Debbie in lane three. Is likely going Debbie lane one though, because I'm already in such a bad spot. The steam cannon will help me kill a creep, but doesn't kill any of these. Doesn't touch Debbie either. If the Heartstopper aura was already in play, it would have it would do a bunch of shit though. So we have ten. In theory I can just intimidate a guy away. There's no kill spells that he has that I'm really concerned about. I forgot to buy that shit in lane one. Holy crap. I'm so bad, I waited the whole game for that. Never got it. All right, so he has initiative. If he has the third of the stupid block, then I have a problem. What the hell was that item in lane one? Do you guys remember? The secret shop, it's the, the one on the left. Oh, you shit. I lose. <sighs> Need a safer line of work. I can't gas anything here. He's just gonna pass. He doesn't even pass. I could kill something, but I'm not gonna bother. Let's just let him win, because I can't cast, I can't stop the damage. 